Hello, Rick Comeric, Certified Financial Planner, coming at you with part two to our series on pursuing a better investment experience. We're looking at 10 points and we're on point three, resist chasing past performance. Many people have used past performance as the determinant on which mutual funds to pick. This is most common in 401k plans where the participants will look at all the rankings of the mutual funds and what do they pick? They pick those that have done best in the past. Makes sense, right? Well, wrong. It doesn't make sense because what the studies show is that those that have done best in the past don't necessarily do best in the future. In fact, only 25% of them remained in the top over a subsequent three-year period. And if you stretch that out to a five-year period, basically none of them remain in the top. So don't chase past performance. Number four, rather let the markets work for you. Rather than chasing performance, just let the financial markets work for you. This is why investors invest for the long term is because there is a positive expected return in the various stock and bond markets. Point number five, consider the drivers of return. This is critically important, and yet it's something that only a few academics know rather than the, the most investors. And that's that there's five main drivers or dimensions to returns. So rather than focusing on individual stocks and bonds, look to the drivers of the returns of the various stocks and bonds. And those are first, market. Are we talking about the stock or the bond market? Number two, size. Are we looking at a small or a large company? Number three, price. Is the current price of that company relatively low compared to its earnings? Those are the three major ones for stocks. And then the two factors for bonds are term and credit. Term, is it a short term or a long term bond? And then finally, credit. Is it a high credit government bond or is it a real low credit like junk bond? Those are the factors that determine the performance of our investments. Number six, practice smart diversification. So you can get diversified by depth, which is good, and you should do that. And that would be, for example, using the S&P 500 index. You can get a lot of stocks. That's 500 different companies. So you have a lot of depth in your diversification. But what you need to do is get smart and move beyond that and also get breadth. That is, don't only get large U.S. companies, but also get international and small companies and a lot of different types of companies. So get diversified by breadth as well as by depth. And we'll go ahead and look at the remainder of our investment principles when we return.